has the private equity industry on the defensive. Efforts here and also abroad intensifying as the U.S. and the U.K. weigh measures to raise taxes on P.E. firms, as we call them. But will added tax burdens do more harm than good? Let's bring in Pat Toomey, president of the Club for Growth. Dan Pedrotti is director of the AFL-CIO's Office of Investment. Dan, let me start with you. You know, yesterday in the U.K., it was almost like private equity was on trial. They had to go before Parliament to defend their tax structure. Do you think that's justified? I think it is justified, Michelle. And these publicly traded firms are ripping off the American taxpayer because of a giant tax loophole. And it's allowing for redistribution of wealth in favor of billionaires and creating a system where Steve Schwartzman of Blackstone pays less in taxes than a firefighter does. Now, we shouldn't be giving tax subsidies to a handful of private equity firms, especially if it's giving them a competitive advantage over other financial services firms. Pat, you know, it was a private equity guy in the UK, Nicholas Ferguson, the boss of SVG Capital, who said to the Financial Times, it doesn't make sense for a private equity executive to be paying less than a cleaning lady when it comes to taxes. How about when PE guys themselves can see that their taxes are low? How troublesome is that? Uh, this, is, uh, this is all very, very misleading, and it would be a terrible idea to impose a huge new tax increase. Let's look at the reality of what happens here. In a private equity fund, a private equity firm, makes investments in operating companies. The operating companies are paying the full income tax in America, in this case 35 percent, which is too high, but that's what they pay. And then uh, we'll have Blackstone under current law, if Grassley and the Bacchus tax increase doesn't go through, the private equity firm would pay another 15 percent on top of the 35 percent paid by the operating company. And then when they pay dividends to their investors, there's another 15 percent applied there. Michelle, what, so under what, current law, you have a triple layer of taxation. And what the, left, the people on the left are saying, including in some in London and Germany, is that's not enough. We need to increase the, the rates on the triple taxation. Michelle, what Pat isn't telling you is Blackstone, according to their own prospectus, paid zero in federal taxes last year. Their effective tax rate was 1.4 percent. He wants to keep it unfairly low. The other problem here is, and Alan Murray identified this in his column yesterday, these firms are trying to game the system. They're trying to have it both ways. When they're arguing that they shouldn't be subject to a corporate tax, they say they engage in passive activities. When they make the case to the SEC that they're not an investment company, they say they're an active manager. So but but this, the question is, why should they be triple taxed? Why should the same not being income taxed. stream be That's taxed absurd. three times? But they're it not being triple is. taxed. And we're, when, they we're pay their the distribution, between them. when they pay their distribution, it's going to be taxed at the dividend rate, which you probably would like to see go higher still. Pat, I should, wouldn't. I think we should keep it low. Should Blackstone but, be paying more than 1.4 percent in taxes? Should Steve Schwartzman be paying less in taxes than a firefighter? We're talking it, about you know, fairness it, here. It, it, and Pat, no, you're arguing in favor of, of redistribution do you think, and wealth. Do you think, well, that's ridiculous. Do you think capital gains should be taxed at ordinary income rates? You probably do. I, think, I don't. I recognize that as an extra layer of tax. Pat, if someone's and coming into the market as a publicly traded company, now. if someone's coming into the market as a publicly traded company, they should be treated as such. There's another concern here, too, as well, <laughs> Michelle, that and Jim, Jim uh, Webb surfaced on this last night. There's a strong national security concern with Blackstone's IPO. That was our where, debate last hour, but fine, go ahead. Where, where, the, where the Chinese <laughs> government has a 44 percent interest in Blackstone LP, the public entity. Yeah. And Congress needs to take a hard look at whether the, the Chinese government is going to have access to sensitive well, government technology and, and satellite technology. But and, Pat doesn't seem to be concerned there's, there's, about fair taxes no question and question national that security there's, questions. That there's, a, that there's a big protectionist element on the left and a, and a, and a hostility to China. It, it's... Uh, it's extremely dangerous if we get into a trade war and we just start deciding who can invest in our companies. Pat, I, think, I, I thought you were this one for the American no, taxpayer. I'm going to touch on this interesting irony because, you know, the Chinese government did decide that it would like to earn a, a, a return from some of the income stream generated by private equity. And so what they did is they decided to buy some. The U.S. government decided it would like some of that, too. So it's going to confiscate Dan, it. Dan, let me it's ask you this. When these guys That's testified, nicely marrying the Wall Street these Journal guys testified in front of a parliament yesterday, one of them said, listen, you want to tax us more? We'll go offshore. Isn't it better to get a smaller piece of something than a bigger piece of nothing? Michelle, I mean, that argument really is a red herring. What's competitive for our economy is a strong securities regulatory system and a fair tax base. Here are a couple of points to make. First, Goldman Sachs recently issued a report that said our economy, our capital markets, are the most competitive in the world. IPOs in the U.S. are up 28 percent this year, and even though it's only June, Chinese companies are uh, listing on the U.S. Uh, exchanges at a record pace. The, and, but the fact that we are losing all the biggest IPOs, the vast majority of big IPOs are happening in other... Yeah, but that's a smaller to... fraction. We've lost market share, haven't we? That's absolutely... Haven't we lost no, a great deal of market right. share? London has definitely yes, gotten more have. market share of overseas and listing, and in for fact, sure. You know, you 
you talk about the scrutiny, it's investors volunteering not to be subject to all the regulations of the SEC that's driving the success of the private equity that's industry. That's fundamentally wrong. What's fundamentally bringing investors correct. here it's because is investors and international saying, investors I don't like, want to be subject to that regulation. That's, that's why they go to private equity That's firms. absolutely wrong. It, it, even international investors like the Norges Bank, the, the Norway Petroleum Reserve Fund, the 300 billion fund has said, we want to come to the U.S. only if you maintain investor protections like Sarbanes-Oxley. That reassures us and that would allow us to come over here and invest then, in then your markets. Then why are private equity funds attracting record amounts of money from when they are not subject to the same kind of scrutiny as, say, Sarbanes-Oxley, which Pat, is where enormously are they looking expensive? To list? And you know what? It, are they, are they looking to list investing. on the London Exchange or the U.S. Uh, exchange, Pat? Uh, the, the, no, we're losing the listings in the United is States. Is Blackstone going, going to on the London Exchange or the U.S. Exchange? Well, they're, they're on the U.S. Exchange. Exactly. Thank God not everybody is going and overseas. And on that note, Guys, a lot of fun. Thank you. We're <laughs> going to have to have you back because I enjoyed that tremendously. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks All for right, having me.